Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. This is part three of working through the anomaly machine or rather lab here on Hack Smarter. The reason I say lab instead of machine is if you have dived into anomaly, you'll notice that one really cool thing about it is it's not one machine, it's actually two machines. We have an Ubuntu web server and then we have a domain controller. Now this is part three. So if this is the first video that you're watching, I do recommend that you start with part one and then part two so that you are not lost, but I'll give you a really quick recap. At this point, we have fully compromised the web server. We are the root user. Not only that, but we gave ourselves persistence. We did an SSH backdoor by taking our public key and adding it to the root user's authorized keys. And now we have full SSH access to the machine as the root user, but we still have a problem. Yes, we've compromised a web server and we are root, but we want to figure out a way that we can pivot over to the domain controller and compromise the domain controller. So in this video, we're going to spend a lot of our time just doing enumeration, seeing what we have access to on the web server and trying to figure out some way that we can dive into it. So let me go ahead and share my screen and we will dive into this together. If I do LSLA, I'm here in the root user. Here's that router config that we were looking at before that we were able to compromise. It's always worth looking at bash history, although this might just be my bash history. Let's see if there's anything in here. And that is just me. That's me adding my back door, nothing else interesting there. And if we go over to home, there was also just one user here who was Ubuntu, but I didn't look that closely at Ubuntu either. And it looks like Ubuntu also has some bash history. So that might be worth looking at those can sometimes be some quick wins and we got nothing there. It's just pseudo Sue in order to become the user. And we have a Vuln. I don't know what that is. What is Vuln.sh? Oh, that's just making the Jenkins instance. It looks like a script that makes it. So nothing that I think we can abuse to pivot into active directory. Your voice is, yeah, my voice isn't doubled. I think you maybe have, you might have my video open in multiple different places, but my voice should not be doubled. I'm, I'm monitoring all in OBS. Audio should be good. If anyone else hears something weird, let me know, but that there shouldn't be anything doubled. Anyways, let me go ahead and go out to our root directory. And let me just ask you guys, those of you at least watching the live stream, which those of you watching after the fact, you may notice that there is chat on the screen. Those are real people, I think. I mean, they might all be bots. I have no idea. But I like to make these videos while I live stream to get audience participation, and I live stream pretty often. So if you do not follow my live streams, you should. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube and then hit the little bell notification, and then you can be part of the live studio audience and hack right alongside of me. But once again, our mission is to pivot from a Linux server over to the domain controller. One way that we could have done that is if in home, if we had a user here who was domain joined, then potentially we could enumerate that user and dig into it. But we don't have a user that is domain joined. So we have to think about this a little more. How can we possibly exploit that? Overgrown Care said Anomaly was a long while ago, but it was released ahead of time because the machine that was supposed to go ahead and exploit to get a DA in about one minute. That's true. <laughs> that is true. Jesse is a bot. That's good to know. But let me ask you guys, but Ryan, you don't count. Like you can't answer. The rest of you, what are some things that you think we should check? Like what are some ways that we could potentially pivot from an Ubuntu web server to a domain controller? What are some connections between the two that we might be able to find? And if we don't know the answer, I don't actually know if we can find it via Google, but let's see, we'll just say, um, pivot from Linux to Active Directory. I don't know if this is gonna come up with anything. Uh, oh, this is probably gonna come up with pivoting. I probably used the wrong word because now we're thinking about pivoting where you um, jump from thing to thing. Let me look at chat. I'm gonna never th thought actually go backwards and entering a system, that op file, KRB files. Ooh, you might be onto something there. Let's start, you both, multiple people said the op file. So let's go ahead and look at opt. And there's nothing there. So opt is striking out. <clears throat> 
All right, scroll through. Kerberos, yes. You meant lateral movement. Yeah, more lateral movement. Pivoting isn't the right word. But uh, it's the same thing, right? You could run Lin Peace. So I saw one person, uh, Noob Sabot, said KRB files. And Kishin Infosec said Kerberos. And I think you guys might be onto something. You could think of Mount Point. You could try SMB folders, key tab files. There we go. You're getting not just close, like you're on fire. You're you're spot on. Or cash tickets and dump temp. That's actually, so you guys may not have been here before when I was explaining, but I was on a recent internal pen test where I was able to compromise a domain admin by looking at cache tickets and temp. That's actually what I did now that I'm thinking of it. I went to the temp directory and there was cache tickets and a domain admin authenticated uh, to the Linux machine. And because I was able to get the root user, I was able to steal their cache ticket and then compromise the domain controller that way. Yeah, exactly, overgrown carrot. Even when you got a PFX file, you can reset a password. Ryan had to hack his own machine to fix a password reset issue yesterday. But we have nothing here in temp, but there is another spot that we can check when there's Kerberos authentication and that are some key tab files. Now I might get this wrong because I think this is where they live. But if we CD over to Etsy and then I think they live in Etsy. And what we could do is we could actually think ls uh if we ls is it etsy if we do krb is it krb5 and then do a wild card and there we go that's what i was trying to look for so we have two files here we have the krb5 configuration file that's for kerberos configuration but then we have this key tab file and let me just first copy this and add it to my notes if I can, where did my notes go? Here we go. I'm doing H1 and we'll call it pivoting from web server to DC. So we have this key tab file and we can do a little bit of reading about this. Like it's imagine we're on an exam or a pen test and we could say, what is a key tab file on Linux? See what good information we're able to find. Guys, I don't like the the AI overview, but fine, I'll go with it. We'll see how accurate this is. So a key tab is a file that stores encrypted keys for Kerberos principles. So another user, a Kerberos principle would be a user, which allows services and applications to authenticate without a password. It contains mappings of principal names, the corresponding cryptographic keys, enabling services to decrypt tickets from clients, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The big thing that you want to know, and it's right here, a key tab is a nog analog, I can't say that word, to a user's password, but for a service or machine account. It enables applications and daemons to log in and access Kerberized services automatically. Still live? I am still live. Uh, but yeah, so a key tab stores authentication information. We can use a key tab to authenticate. And I'll show this to you guys. At least I'm probably gonna screw up the syntax and I'm gonna bang my head for a while because I always forget the proper way to do this. But one, let's go ahead and look at the configuration file to see how we might need to configure our own file. So when we look at the configuration file, you can see we have the domain realm. So it is anomaly.hsm for hack smarter. We have the DNS lookup, blah, 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 blah. We have the domain controller here. So now we have the host name for the domain controller. It's the anomaly-dc.anomaly-hsm. We can add that to Etsy host, but this is what the KRB5 configuration file looks like. I'm actually gonna copy this because I think we can make our life easier by uh, just like using that same configuration file. And I'm gonna paste that in so we have that. And just so I don't forget, let's go ahead and add this to our Etsy host file right now. Now that we know the full host name of the domain controller, I'm gonna do sudo nano Etsy host. Drop down to anomaly, jump over to the side here, and we'll just add it right here. And we'll paste that in. And let's jump over to our SSH right here. Now our key tab file should be encrypt encrypted, I think. So you can see, you can't see much, although 
we are able to see it's a user. So the key tab file belongs to Brandon Boyd. We don't know anything about Brandon Boyd. We haven't ran Bloodhound. We haven't collected that. <clears throat> but let's see what we are able to find. What we can do now is download this to our machine. We want to grab this key tab file. So then we might be able to authenticate with it to the domain controller. So let's go ahead and try to grab this file. I think we can use S, not I think, we can use SCP. S, if we have SSH access to a machine, SCP is, was it secure source copy something? I don't actually remember what it stands for, but SCP is a way that you can use SSH in order to transfer files because we want to download this file. I guess, you know what we could do that's even easier? Um, we could uh, YOLO it. Let's just open up a Python web server. <laughs> I didn't know if that would work, but I don't know why it wouldn't work. We'll open up a Python web server in Etsy and just download it that way. Screw SCP, because I always screw up the syntax for that as well. And will the W get HTTP anomaly.hsm and it's on port 80, we can just download the key tab file. And there we go. That was much easier than uh, doing SCP. I'm just going to go ahead and close out the Python web server now. And I thought I was in my Hexmart directory, but I'm not. So I'm going to CP that uh, key tab file. We're going to save it to home, Tyler, Hacksmarter anomaly, like so. And I'm also going to CD to Hacksmarter anomaly. Yeah, don't, you probably shouldn't do that in a real pen test, <laughs> especially with internet facing. But YOLO, it worked. We have our KRB5 key tab file here. Let me look at chat because I might be missing some questions. <clears throat> this is the anomaly machine, Mr. X security over on Hacksmarter. Go to hacksmarter.org and you can check it out. Secure copy over SSH, got it. Okay, so there was a key tab folder that you're exploiting. The machine is anomaly, not a folder, but a file. It's an encrypted file that we are pulling down. <clears throat> All right, I don't think I'm missing anything in chat so far. But now what we want to do is we need to, uh, I think we need to extract the key tab file. And I think we might need a tool for that. Let me just go to Google and we'll say exploiting key tab. I'm sure there's a nice article. Yes, this is what I'm looking for, I think. All right, key tab extract. Key tab extract is a little utility to help extract valuable information which may be used to authenticate Linux boxes to Kerberos. Sounds exactly what we want. The script will extract information such as the realm, service principle, encryption type, and NTLM hash. Let me go ahead and just copy this and add it to our note so we are documenting what tooling we are using. So we'll just say, uh, I'm gonna do an H3 just so we can document our steps here. And we will say working with key tab files, okay? So we're gonna use this script right there. And if we jump over to this, we can go ahead and grab this and pull it down to our machine. I'm gonna git clone it. <clears throat> we'll CD into it, what do we need to do? So we have just a Python, now this is six years old. I'm not sure if it will run on its own right away. And you can see that it doesn't. Uh, open KT file, read no such file. Oh, so it's just looking for the file. There is no help. I'm just going to copy this out one directory. And we have our key tab extract right there. And now I think if we run it against the KRB5 key tab file, and sure enough, it actually does work. We have uh, our realm, we have our service principle, and we have the AES-256 hash. We are unable though to extract, to extract NTLM hashes, but we can go ahead and drop this here. <clears throat> so we know that it belongs to Brandon Boyd. We don't have the NTLM hash, but now we need to figure out a way that we can authenticate. And let me get a drink of water. <clears throat> Although, you know what I think? 
I'm looking over at the recording time. I always like to try to find good natural stopping points to give you guys challenges to work on on your own. And I think this is a really good challenge to work on on your own before I just show you the solution and how you can do this. So if you've been following along, which if you haven't, you should be. And if you have a sub to Hack Smarter, which if you don't, you should go get one right now at hacksmarter.org, but you can also do this machine. And I showed you in this video how we could enumerate the machine, at least the web server. We found the KRB5 key tab. We know it belongs to Brandon Boyd. We were able to do key tab extract to see if we get any more information about it. But really the next step is you need to figure out a way that you can use this key tab file to authenticate to the domain controller. The one hint that I'll give you is you have to likely update your own KRB5 configuration file so that it has the anomaly domain included in it, but it should give you most of the information up here of what you need to do. But that's the task I wanna challenge you with. I showed you how to work a little bit with the key tab. I showed you how to get it down on your machine. Probably shouldn't just Python 3 HTTP server in the real world, but YOLO, it worked and we got the file but I want you to try this now on your own. Can you figure out how to use this key tab to authenticate from your Kali Linux machine or whatever your attack machine is to the domain controller as Brandon Boyd? And if you're able to do that, awesome. Give it a shot on your own. If right now you're like, no, I have no idea how to do that. Guess what? There's this amazing tool called Google. And I promise you, there are many, many, many articles that will teach you how to do this online. And one of the best ways to learn is when you encounter something you don't understand, and then you just dive into it head first, stumble around, make mistakes, and learn as you go. So I want you to try it on your own first. If you can't solve it, that's totally fine. You can join me in the next video and we'll continue working through this lab together, but give it a shot on your own and then join me in the next video. I'll see you there.